In this lecture, I'm going to talk about the epithelium. As I said before, our body consists of four basic tissues. We have the epithelium, we have the connective tissue, we have the muscle, and we have the nervous system. In this lecture, I'm going to talk specifically about the epithelium. As you remember from the last lecture, I talked about the first key of definition, which is the cell. As I said, it's a mass of a protoplasm surrounded by a membrane containing nucleus and organelles. And as I said, the cell is the fundamental unit of life and the smallest unit that exists. And as I said, cells don't exist as independent entities. As I said, cell will always found as a part of the tissues. The second key of defini definition, which is the tissue. Tissue is aggregation of cell and the intracellular material specialized for a specific function. As I said, our body consists of four basic tissues. We have the epithelium, we have the connective, we have the muscle, and we have the nervous system. As I said, cells will be always part of the tissue. Usually, the tissue function determines what the cells are present. For example, for the tissue specialized for contraction, we need the myofiber cells that contain the actin and myosin, which are responsible for the contraction of the muscles. For the bone, we need to have osteocyte osteoblast, which is responsible for production of the matrix and for mineralization of the matrix. So the cells make tissue function possible. So the bend in the tissue, we have certain type of cells and we're going to talk about later. So the structure of the cells often predict based on the tissue function and vice versa. As I said, for the muscle, we need cells that have actin and myosin so they can be able to contract. For the connective or the epithelium, we don't need cells that have actin and myosin because these cells are not specialized for contraction. As I said, and this is very important, our body consists of four basic tissues. We have the epithelium, we have the connective, we have the muscles, and finally we have the nervous system. Any of our organs should have at least two of these tissues. But most of the time, we will see most of our organs have all of these four basic tissues. Tissues. As I said again, you should always remember this. In our body, only we have four basic tissues epithelium, connective, muscle, and nervous tissue. We'll start about uh, the objectives for this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to talk about what is the definition of the epithelium, how we classify it, what are the structural features of the epithelium, and that is very important. At the end of this lecture, we'll be able to identify and know the characteristic and function and primary location of different type of the epithelium. And very important, in the next lecture, we are going to talk about the glands and how we can differentiate between these different type of glands depend on their type on their secretion, and uh, how gland are classified this will be in the next lecture so we'll start what is the epithelium epithelium is a tissue one of the four of the four basic tissues is consisting almost totally of an aggregation of cell resting in a basement membrane so we have all of these cells they are resting in a basement membrane all we can see here these cells that are resting in a basement membrane okay so the epithelium is aggregation of cells resting in a basement membrane these cells in a position and specialized for could be absorption secretion excretion and protective function for example for the protective function, the skin, our skin, is consists of epidermis and dermis, and the epidermis is consists of cretinized stratified squamous epithelium, and this epithelium is very important as 
protection for our body. As we know, it protects our body against the UV light. Any damage for the epithelium of the skin will result in the inflammation and infection. The epithelium that found in the small intestine is responsible for the absorption. We have cells, for example, the goblet cells that found in the upper digestive system responsible for production of the mucus. And this mucus is very important for the protection of the our airways. The kidneys consist of tubules and these tubules is responsible for the excretion of the waste material outside our body. As I said, these epithelium, they rest in a basement membrane. So we can see here, this is the area, this is the area of the cells, and this area that found at this area here, we call it as the basement membrane. Sometimes, as abbreviation or other name, we could say like basal lamina. So basal lamina means the same as the basement membrane. But this is not exactly true because this basal lamina, this is the area here, is just part of the basement membrane. This basement membrane consists of two layers, the lamina lucida or lamina densa, and also contain the fibers. So this is the only this area where we means by basal lamina. But most of the time, if we say basement membrane or basal lamina, that will be true. Any epithelium should have the basement membrane because this is one of the most important thing. Epithelium should have a basement membrane and this is considered as the base that all these epithelial epithelia is resting on. As I said, all true epithelia, they should have it. And one of the most important function of the base membrane, they isolate the epithelium from the underlying connective tissue. So we can see here, this is the area of the epithelium and this is the area of the connective tissue. The separation between the epithelium and the connective tissue, CT is connective tissue, is the basement membrane. As I say, the basement membrane consists of lumina lucida, lumina basalis, sub-basal lumina, which consists of a reticular fiber. So all of these structures are the component of the basement membrane. And we can see here, we have a reticular fibers and also we have a type 4 collagen fiber. The component of the basement membrane is the protoglycan. Protoglycan, which is protein and glucose. The subtype of these protoglycans, we have the heparin sulfate, laminin, fibronectin, and as I said, we have the type 4 collagen. This is all the component of the basement membrane. And we can see here, this is the epithelial cells and we can see these epithelial cells rest in a basement membrane. This is the slide here, the slide from the kidney. Okay, and we can see here we have the epithelial cells here. We have the different epithelial cells. And we can see here these cells resting in a basement membrane. Regular H and E stain, we could not detect the basement membrane. However, if we use this stain, which is the bath stain, which is a periodic acid chef stain, we can stain the protoglycan. As I said in the slide before, this basement membrane contains glycoprotein, and this stain, which is the past stain, stain the glycoprotein. So all what we can see here, this all of the pink color, this is the area of the basement membrane. And this was possible because we use the past stain. If we use the regular H and E stain, we'll be not able to detect the basement 
membrane. So we've talked now about the basal lamina or the basement membrane function. The first and the important function, which is the attachment. The second, which is the filtration. As I said, all of these epithelium, they attach in their base to the basement membrane. And the other function, which is the The other function, which is the filtration. As I said before, we have the basement membrane, we have the epithelium, and as I said, we have the connective tissue. In the underlying connective tissue, we have the blood vessels, and these blood vessels contain red blood cells. And the nutrient and the oxygen is going to diffuse from the connective tissue toward the epithelium, because the epithelium, one of the characteristics of the epithelium, uh, it is avascular. Avascular means they don't have blood vessels between them. So this oxygen and nutrient have to filtrate through the basement membrane to reach the epithelium. So this will prevent any toxic material or any waste material or bad material to diffuse from the connective tissue toward the epithelium. And the other function, which is tissue compartmentalization, we have two compartments here. We have the first compartment and we have the second compartment. The first compartment is the epithelium compartment and the second compartment, which is the connective tissue. And this was possible to separate between these two compartments by the basement membrane. So we have the three functions of the basement membrane, we have the attachment, we have the filtration, and finally we have the tissue compartmentalization. So now we're going to talk about the origin of the epithelium. If you remember from biology, in the embryo, at the early of the development, we have three layers. We have the endoderm, we have the mesoderm and we have the ectoderm. From outside we have the ectoderm, we have the mesoderm and we have the endoderm. The epithelium, the origin of the epithelium will be from these three layers, the ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm. The ectoderm, which is the layer out found outside, ecto outside, will form the epithelium of the external body surfaces. The epithelium of the skin, the origin of it will be the ectoderm. The endoderm, as you know, that our body is like a tube. It could be the epithelium lining from inside or covering from outside. The lining of the digestive system and the respiratory system, the origin of this epithelium is from the endoderm. And finally, the lining of the vascular system, which is the cardiovascular system, the blood vessels, the arteries, the veins, the capillaries, all of these origin of the epithelium in these structures are coming from the mesoderm. Also, the serous membrane of the body cavities is coming from the mesoderm. The urogenital system, the male and the female reproductive system, the renal system, the origin of the epithelium is from the mesoderm. Now we'll talk about the characteristics of the epithelium. The first characteristics of the epithelium is the separation. As I said before, we have the epithelium and this epithelium line in the basement membrane and there is a connective tissue and this is the epithelium. And the epithelium is separated from the connective tissue by the basement membrane. So as I said before, all the true epithelia are separated from the underlying connective tissue by the basement membrane. And as I said, these basement membrane, they are positive for the pass stain. This is the pass stain, which is the area of the basement membrane. As I said, because this pass, which is the periodic acid shift stain, stain glycoproteins, and the basement membrane contains the glycoprotein. Sometimes cells, they lack the basement membrane, but will not call them the epithelium. We call them epithelioid. Epithelioid is a structure similar to epithelium, but it's not epithelium. It is not epithelium because they lack the basement membrane. 
Second characteristic of the epithelium is the proliferation and high turnover. For example, our stomach, they contain epithelium, and this epithelium almost weekly is replaced. The epithelium totally is replaced by a new epithelium. Okay, so we have to have high proliferation rate, which is proliferation, which is increase in the number and high turnover the cells is going to die so the epithelium they have higher proliferation rate they increase in the number in very fast and high numbers and also to match the increase in the epithelium they die faster so that we say that they have proliferation and high turnover true epithelium has polarity polarity by this we mean that cells have top and bottom it's like our body we have the head and we have the feet and the function that found in the head is different from the function that found in the feet and here's the similar for the cells cells they have top and they have bottom and the function here is different from the function that found in the bottom so that's why we say that the cells has polarity when we talk about also the characteristics of the epithelium we say the epithelial sheet are avascular avascular what we mean by this that the epithelium at the surface or in the lining they don't contain any blood vessels mostly blood vessels found in the sub underlying connective tissue and through diffusion oxygen and nutrient is diffused from the connective tissue toward the epithelium and see here we have the basement membrane and this membrane which is separate the epithelium from the connective tissue also they has the second function as i said before the filtration only specific material like oxygen and nutrient and good material can diffuse from the connective tissue toward the epithelium and vice versa however the secretory units that found in the connective tissue like here we have secretory unit which is part from the epithelium that found in the epithelium they are vascular however the lining epithelium the epithelium that line or cover they are a vascular now we'll talk about the categories of the epithelium we have two types of the epithelium we have the covering or lining and we have the glandular or secretory for the covering or lining as i said our body is like a tube so if the epithelium found outside we call it as covering and if it's found inside it is lining for example the skin is covering the lining of the digestive and respiratory system they are lining and the second type and we are going to talk about it next lecture which is the glandular or secretory which is mostly found in the area in, of the connective tissue these are epithelia but they are found in the connective tissue and they are responsible for secretion for example could be serous secretion or mucus secretion or both so the first category which is the covering and lining it will be neatly classifiable can easily be classified as we're going to see in the up next uh, slides uh, line the hollow organs and form sheet epidermis of the skin lining of the glandular duct endothelial lining of the blood vessels all of these are covering or lining and remember as i said before our body is like a tube from outside we have for example skin 
and inside the lining of digestive system, respiratory system, all of all of these organs is lined by the epithelia. And the second type or the category of the epithelium, which is the glandular or the secretory, which form solid masses, and usually they are found in the subendoline connective tissue. They are not neatly classified, not easy to classify them. And we have two types of gland. We have the exocrine and we have the endocrine glands, and we are going to talk about in the next lecture. Now we'll talk about the function of the epithelium. One of the functions of the epithelium, which is the secretion. We have the goblet cells here. Okay, and these cells contain mucinogen and they are going to produce the mucin. And this mucin will cover the surface of the epithelium and work as a trap. Work as a trap to catch the dust and the foreign bodies. So what this is one of the function of the epithelium, which is the secretion. And we can see and find these epithelia, which is the goblet cells found in the respiratory system, in the digestive system, in the conjunctival lining. The other function, which is the interchange with the environment, which is the gas exchange, for example, in the lung, here slide of the lung, and we have these alveoli, these alveoli lined by epithelia, and this epithelium is responsible for exchange the CO2 for oxygen. The other function, which is the nutrient absorption, and this is true in the digestive system, in the small intestine and large intestine, we have specific cells. We call it them the enterocyte, which is a type of the epithelia. These cells are responsible for the absorption of the amino acid, uh, glucose, fatty acid, water, uh, minerals, vitamins. So this is one of the function, which is the interchange with the environment. The other function, which is UV barrier, physical barrier to infection and pigmentation and camouflage. As we can see, we have C here, skin. This skin is consists of cretinized stratified sequamous epithelium. This is epithelium. This epithelium is very important because any injury for our skin will result in the infection. The other function, this epithelium contains, for example, this cell here, which is the melanocyte, which is responsible for production of the melanin, which is very important as a barrier against the ultraviolet uh, light. Uh, the other function, which is pigmentation, which is the give us the color of our skin, and it's very important, for example, a lizard as the camouflage, and this will help the animals to disguise in the nature, for example, of the if the lizard, for example, uh, sit in the green leaves, they will take the color green. If they stand in the sand, they will take the color brown. And this will help them to avoid to be catched by other animals or hunted by other animals. Other function, which is the excretion, for example, the disposal of nitrogenous waste, this is one of the function of the epithelium. Stimulus reception, for example, in our nose, we have the middle concha, and this middle concha contain olfactory epithelium, and this epithelium is responsible for the olfaction. This epithelium is responsible for the olfaction, and other type or example of the stimulus receptors which is the taste bud we have these taste bud that found in the tongue okay and this is very important in the process of the gustation so far we talk about the epithelium we said the epithelium is one of the four basic tissues as I said, the epithelium could be covering the organ or lining the organ. Cells have the polarity, they have 
top and they have bottom. As I said, the cells of the epithelium are separating from the underlying connective tissue by the basement membrane. As I said, also the epithelium avascular and receive nourishment and oxygen by diffusion. As I said, also epithelium could be classified into covering and lining and the other type which is the glandular and that will be the talk of our next lecture. I will talk now about the classification of the covering and lining epithelium. I will talk about the classification of the gland in the next lecture as I said before. Usually the classification of the epithelium, the covering and lining tip in two criteria. The first criteria, which is the shape, and the other criteria is the number of layers. If we have one layer, for example, as we can see here, one layer, we call them as symbol. If there are more than one layer, we call them as stratified. Now, if we have the shape flat, like this, or like this, or like this. If they have flat shape, we call it squamous. If they have their shape, the tall, equal, the wide, then we call it as cuboidal. If they're tall, is more than their width, then we call them as columnar epithelium. So if we have one layer of the epithelium and they have flat shape, we call it as symbol sequamous epithelium. If they are tall, equal the width and consist of one layer, we call them as symbol cuboidal. If their length is more than their width, then we call them and consist of one layer, then we call them as the symbol columnar epithelium. So if we have more than one layer, usually we'll look in the outermost layer. If they consist of more than one layer, we call them as stratified, and then we look into the outermost layer. If this outermost layer flat in shape, we call them as stratified sequamous epithelium. If there are more than one layer and the outermost layer, for example, cuboidal or columnar, we call them as stratified columnar or stratified uh, cuboidal epithelium. So we we'll start with the first one, which is the squamous epithelium. The epithelium, they have flat shape. Usually their shape, if we're looking from the top to the bottom, they are like fried egg. And we can see this is the shape of the epithelium. They are flat cells. Okay. And usually these epithelium lines the blood vessels. So the lining, and this is very important, the arteries, the vein, the blood capillaries, most of the time, the lining is the symbol sequamous epithelium. The covering of the hollow organ that found inside our body cavities, they also covered by simple sequamous epithelium. And this simple sequamous epithelium, we call them as the mesothelium. So you can see here, this is the blood vessels, this is the red blood cells, and we can see these cells here. This is the lining of the blood vessels. As we can see, this is one layer, and these cells flat. We call these cells as the symbol squamous epithelium. Symbol squamous epithelium. As I said, they are covering the organs or lining the blood vessels. When they line the blood vessels, they are symbol sequamous epithelium, and sometimes we call them as the endothelial cells. Endothelial cells, and when they, we have, for example, we have the stomach. This is the stomach. When the stomach is covered from outside by symbol sequamous epithelium, 
these cells are the mesothelium. As I said, the thermal squamous single cell layer of the squamous shape epithelium, they line the blood vessels. We call them as the endothelium, and when they line and cover the body cavities and organs, we call them as the mesothelial cells. Other example for the simple sequamous epithelium, we have the alveoli in the lung. They contain the type 1 nemocyte, which is the simple sequamous epithelium. So again, this cell here, and we have the cells here. They are flat cells lining blood vessels and you can see here this is the red blood cells so always the lining of the blood vessels symbol squamous epithelium but the name of the cells is the endothelium and we can see here they cover the organs or line the body cavities and these cells again symbol squamous epithelium and these cells we call them as the mesothelium again this is the blood Vessels, these cells, all what we can see here, we can see the nucleus, and these nucleus are oval in shape or could be flat like this one here. As you can see here, we could not see the cytoplasm. The amount of the cytoplasm is very limited. The second type of the epithelium, which is the symbol cuboidal epithelium, as I said, they are approximately as tall as they are wide, like this. Okay, and the nucleus is oval, and the nucleus is centrally located. So if we look here, this is the area of the tubules, and we can see these cells here almost the width equal the tall. This epithelium, we call it as the symbol cuboidal epithelium. The location, they are found in the lining of the gland ducts and also in the wall of the thyroid glands and also found in the kidney. So remember, for now, they found in the kidney. We'll talk about the different examples later. So this is the epithelium. Can see here this is the basement membrane, the cells, the width equal the tall. This epithelium is the symbol cuboidal epithelium. As I said, the symbol cuboidal epithelium could be found in the small duct of the excretic gland. They mostly we can see them in the kidney tubules, uh, in the ovary germinal epithelium. We have two types of the symbol cuboidal epithelium. We have low cuboidal epithelium and we have the tall cuboidal epithelium. For example, if we have this epithelium here, which is the symbol cuboidal epithelium, if we have this epithelium, little bit, the tall, less than the width, we call them as the low cuboidal epithelium, and we have it more little bit more than the width, then we call them the two, the tall cuboidal epithelium, but this is difficult. So we'll stuck with the symbol cuboidal epithelium. So these are the duct. Okay, and this is the cells. We have it here, and also we have it here. See this one here? All of these cells, the tall equal the width, and the nucleus oval, rounded in shape, and they are centrally located. Centrally, center, which is in the middle. Okay, in the middle, so we call them as centrally located. See this one here, this is the area of the basement membrane, and this is the nucleus oval and centrally located and we can see here this is the epithelium which is the symbol cuboidal epithelium 
other classification we have we have the simple cupo uh, columnar epithelium and in these cells they are taller than they are wide see here this is the cell this is the nucleus and we can see that the tall is more than the wide so that's why we call them the symbol columnar epithelium very important notice here that the cells they are taller than they are wide the nucleus are elongated and they are located near the base so this is very important difference from the symbol cuboidal epithelium in the symbol cuboidal epithelium as i said the tall equal the width the nucleus is oval and the nucleus is located near uh, in the center here in the columnar the the cells are taller than they are wide the nucleus elongated and the nucleus is found near the basement membrane we can find this epithelium in the lining of the intestine so we have the slide of the duodena duodena ileum colon cecum most of the epithelium that we'll find at that area will be the symbol columnar epithelium columnar epithelium as i say the symbol columnar we can find in the small intestine colon lining in the gallbladder the stomach lining and the gastric glands mostly symbol columnar epithelium as we can see here this is regular h and e stain you can see you could not see the basement membrane but we can draw it like this because basement membranes separate the epithelium from the underlying connective tissue as we can see here these cells here they are taller than they are wide why the nucleus is elongated and the nu nucleus is found near the basement membrane now we'll talk about the stratified epithelium we'll start with the first one which is the stratified sequamous epithelium which is the very common type because it's found in epidermis of the our skin the lining of the body orifices any orifice in our body like our mouth el anus el nose the lining of these or uh, body orifices will be the stratified sequamous epithelium any area with the heavy wear area that can be damaged usually the epithelium at that area will be stratified sequamous epithelium like in the bottom of our feet or our hand the lining will be stratified sequamous epithelium we can see here this is the area the basement membrane we have one layer second layer third fourth and we have fifth six layer but we can see here we started as columnar epithelium but at this area here the cells start to be flat so this epithelium we call it stratified sequamous epithelium we have two types of the stratified sequamous epithelium we have the cratinized stratified sequamous epithelium and we have the non cratinized stratified sequamous epithelium in the first time the cells in the surface lose their nucleoli and filled with a protein called keratin and this keratin is a water resistant protein form a protective barrier against destructive force of the environment however in the second type which is non keratinized stratified sequamous the cells retain their nucleoli and they will not contain the keratin so if the cells die and filled with the keratin then we this epithelium will call it which is the uppermost layer keratinized stratified sequamous epithelium if their cells retain their nucleoli and they don't have the keratin then we call them as the non-keratinized stratified sequamous epithelium
For the stratified sequence epithelium, we have three to five layers, depending the type, if it's cratinized stratified sequimus epithelium or the non-cratinized stratified sequimus epithelium. For the first uh, layers we have, we have the stratum, basally stratum layer, basally, which is found near the basement. Then we have the stratum spinosum. Then we have the stratum granulosum. Then the bend. All of these three layers, we will have them in the cratinized and non-cratinized. For the cratinized, then we'll have these layers, which is the stratum lucidum, stratum corneum, and stratum disjunctum. So as I said, the stratified sequimus should have three to five layers, stratum basali, which is the deepest near the basement membrane. And usually these cells could be cuboidal or columnar epithelium. In the second layer, we have the stratum spinosum, which is composed of layer of polyhedral. Polyhedral, they have multiple, like this. And then we have the stratum granulosum. The cells start to be more flattened. When the stars start to be flat, this layer we call the as a stratum granulosum. So if we look at this slide here, so we have this is the area of the basement membrane. As I said, we can imagine this is the area. So the cells that found this area here, we call them as the stratum basale. And the cells with multiple here, we call it polyhedral cells and this layer here will be the stratum spinosa and we can see at this area here the cells start to be more flat so these cells here we call it or the layer we call it as the stratum granulosa so after that we have the area where start the cells start to die and filled with the keratin and this layer we call it as a stratum corneum and the outermost of the stratum cornea become loose and separate then we call it as the stratum disjunctum so we we'll start from here again this is the area of the basement membrane so the cells that found at this area here as a stratum basale the cells that found at this area here the stratum spinosum and the cell that become more flat this is a stratum of granulosum, and we can see here this is the area of the stratum corneum. This is the cells. They lose their nucleoli. The cell filled with the keratin. The cell is dead. This is called the stratum corneum. And on the outermost of this layer here, we can see that these keratin start to become loose and separate. And this layer here, we call it as the stratum disjunctum. Sometimes we have more of than these three to five layers. Sometimes we have the stratum superficially. Cells contain keratin and retain their nucleoli. The cells flat, they retain their nucleoli and they fill with the keratin. So this cells or layer, we call it as a stratum superficially. Sometimes we have the stratum lucidum. And again, we have flattened cratinized cells. The cells lose their nucleoli and filled with protein. And this protein will be translucent, transparent. This protein is called elidine, and usually this layer, the stratum lucidum, is found between the stratum granulosum and stratum cornea, but it's not found in all types of the cratinized stratified sequimus epithelium. And because they are contain transparent protein, which is the elidine, and they are the appearance is translucent, so they call them the stratum lucidum. So again, this here. We have the area of the basement membrane and we have the stratum basale 
and we have the stratum spinosum and then we have the stratum granulosum this area here which is the area of the stratum cardium and this is the area of the separation we call it as the stratum disjunctum the stratified sigmoid epithelium could be found in the epidermis the lining of the oral cavity saphicus the lining of the vagina as I said, contain one, two, three stratum basali, stratum spinosum, and we have the stratum granulosum. This type of the epithelium, because they don't have the keratin layer, we call them as the non keratinized stratified sequimus epithelium. And if they have the keratin layer, we call them as keratinized stratified sequimus epithelium. So the difference between the keratinized and non-keratinized depend. If we have this layer here, we call it as keratinized stratified sequimus epithelium. And if we don't have this layer here, we call it as non-keratinized stratified sequimus epithelium. However, keratinized or non-keratinized only used with stratified sequimus epithelium. We don't use it with the stratified columnar epithelium or stratified cuboidal epithelium. Now we'll talk about the stratified cuboidal or columnar will be less common. We'll find it in the lining of the large gland ducts and reproduction tract in some animals. Usually we have two layers. We have and we will look to the outer layer at the cells. The tall of the cells is equal to the Y, then we call it a stratified cuboidal epithelium. And if the cells, the outermost layer, they are taller than they are wide, then we call it as the stratified columnar epithelium. As I say, the stratified cuboidal epithelium found in the sweaty gland, anorectal junction, and the large ducts of the exocrine glands. You can see that again, this is the outermost layer. This is one layer, and we have the other layer. And you can see here the nucleus, they are oval. So this is a stratified cuboidal epithelium. Stratified columnar epithelium could be found in the largest of the exocrine gland ducts and also we could find them in the anorectal junction it's the area of junction between the anus and rectum we call it as the anorectal junction we could find the stratified columnar epithelium again this is the area and we can see here we have several layers but again, we'll look to the outermost layer. You can see here the nucleus are elongated and near the basement membrane. So this epithelium, we call it as stratified columnar epithelium. Again, this is the area of the basement membrane. We could not resolve it, but we know that it's found in this area here because it separates the epithelium from the connective tissue. Again, we look for the outermost layer. We can see the cells are elongated and near the basement membrane. So this is a stratified columnar epithelium. Now I'm going to talk about the special type of epithelium we have also beside the symbol squamous cuboidal columnar or stratified squamous cuboidal or columnar epithelium. We have what we call the pseudo stratified epithelium. Pseudo is not true. Stratified epithelium. This epithelium appears as stratified, but it's not stratified. It only consists of only one layer. If we Look at this slide here, we can see this is the area of the basement membrane. All the cells touch 
the basement membrane, but not all the cell reach the lumen. So this epithelium is a true, it consists of one layer, but because we have different size of cells and nucleoli found in different levels, it appears as stratified, but it only consists of one layer. We can see that all the cells touch the base membrane, but not all the cells reach the lumen. However, in the stratified, we can see the cells in the basement, near the basement membrane, only the one that touch the basement membrane, which is near the basement or the basal region, and the other cells or the other layer reach to the lumen. So these cells here reach to the lumen, but they don't reach to the basement membrane. And the cells that found at this area here reach the basement membrane, but they don't reach the lumen. So this type is called stratified. However, in this one here, we can see that all the cells, all the cells touch the basement membrane. However, not all of them reach the lumen. So that's why we call them as pseudo-stratified epithelium. Pseudo-stratified epithelium. This epithelium, we can find it in the respiratory system. We can find it in the trachea. We can find it in the bronchi. As I said, not all the cells reach the free surface, which is the lumen. All the cells reach the basement membrane. Okay, so it's truly simple type, not a stratified. Not always, but most of the time, these epithelium, they are stratified, uh, ciliated. So we can see here, we have the cilia. So this is the ciliated, so the stratified columnar epithelium. We have a special type of cells that are responsible for production of the mucus. We call it the goblet cells. So the pseudostratified, as I said, that all the cells in contact of the basal lamina we could find them in the trachea and the bronchi lining we could find them in the lining of the ductus difference and the afferent ducts of the male reproductive system so you can see here this epithelium we have different layers okay and we have the cilia so this epithelium we call as ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium with goblet cells these the goblet cells which contain mucinogens once released they form a mucus layer that work as a trap for dust and foreign body and we can see this here all of these modification which is the cilia. Another type of the epithelium we have, which is the transitional epithelium. This epithelium found in the renal calyces, bladder, urethra, ureter. So it's found mostly in the renal system. This epithelium, we call it a transitional epithelium. This transitional epithelium, they call it transitional epithelium because it's transition between two states in the bladder, relax or stretch. We have the bladder, urinary bladder. If it's filled with the urine, so it will be expanded. And if it's empty from the urine, it will be like this. So it's filled with the urine, we call it as stretched, and when it's empty from urine, we call it as relaxed. This epithelium, you can see here, this is a transitional epithelium. We can see here it consists of several layers, and we can see the cells that found outside these cells the width is more than the tall. These cells, we call them as the pillow-shaped cell. Pillow-shaped cells. 
This sense, if you remember, we talk about the simple squamous or cupoidal or the columnar. We said the squamous, they are flat cells. Okay. And the cupoidal, they are the tall, equal the width. The columnar, they are taller than they are wide. However, we never talk about the cells are wider than they are tall. And this epithelium only found in the renal system, in the transitional epithelium. We call the cells because it's almost like a pillow that we sleep in. We call it a pillow cells. You can see this cells here. This is the area of the mesoid membrane. And we can see the outermost cells. They are wider than they are tall. When the bladder is full with urine, they appear as one layer, flat cells. We call them. So as you can see here, that's the epithelium. When the bladder is stretched and full with urine, the epithelium appear as one layer. So that's why we call it transitional epithelium because it transits between two stages. Whether the bladder will be emptied in the epithelium is stratified epithelium with typical pillow-shaped cells in the top. And when the bladder is full and stretched, then the epithelium appears as one layer. The third type of epithelium we have from the special type, which is conjunctival epithelium, which is found in the conjunctiva. It's a stratified type epithelium, columnar in the top layer. You can see here we have several layers, and we have the top layer here, which is columnar epithelium, and contain a lot of these cells. All of these cells we can see here, all of these cells are goblet cells. As I said, it's found inside our eyelid in the surface of the eye. Now we'll talk about the modification that we can see in the top of the epithelium. We can see this is the area of the basement membrane. This is the columnar epithelium. And we can see here we have the cilia. And usually these cilia is associated with the epithelium. And usually main function, which is a transport and function, uh, protection. So this epithelium can beat in two directions and this will result in moving particles either this side or in this side. And the other function which is protection. For example, in the upper respiratory epithelium, this epithelium beat only in one orientation, one direction, and this will result in the movement of particles that enter through the nose to the upper respiratory system, this cilia beats to move these particles and dust toward the upper respiratory system so the body can get rid of them. So this is the cilia, which is transport and protection. And the other structure we have, which is the microvilli or villi, Microvilli found in many types of epithelium, especially in the digestive system, in the small intestine, large intestine. See, this is the epithelium. And we can see this structure here. This structure that found at this area here, we call it the microvilli, and they are associated with secretion or absorption function. These microvilli, sometimes they call it as the brush border or the striated border. That's how it appears in light microscopy. So now we are going to do a review for this lecture. Okay, so in the exam, I'm going to ask you about the classification of this epithelium. You will tell me this is the symbol sequamous epithelium. If you ask you what this structure here, this structure here is the nucleus of the simple sequamous epithelium. If I ask about the name of this epithelium, will will uh, write for me, this is the endothelial cells. Again, if we go to this slide here, 
If I ask you about the classification, we'll study this is simple squamous epithelium. If I ask you about the name of the cell, you will say mesothelium. What type of cell that found here? This is the red blood cells. Classify this tissue. Again, this is the simple squamous epithelium. Classify the tissue. You will tell me this is the simple cuboidal epithelium. Name one organ we could find this epithelium. This will be the kidney. Name the structure here. This is the nucleus. Again, classify this epithelium will be simple cuboidal epithelium. Name one organ we could find this epithelium. Your answer will be the kidney. Classify this tissue. You will tell me this is the simple columnar epithelium. Name the structure here. This is the nucleus of the epithelium. Name one organ we could find this epithelium. Your answer will be the small intestine, the large intestine, and stomach. Classify this tissue here. This is the symbol columnar epithelium. Classify this tissue. Your answer will be non cratinized stratified sequamous epithelium. Name this layer here. This layer here. You will tell me this is the stratum basale. Name this layer will be the stratum spinosum. Name this layer here will be the stratum granulosum. Classify this epithelium non keratinized stratified sequamous epithelium. Your answer, stratified sequamous epithelium, will be false. You have to say non keratinized stratified sequamous epithelium. Classify this tissue, you will say keratinized stratified sequamous epithelium. Name this layer here will be stratum basale. This layer here, stratum spinosum, stratum uh, spinosum here. And this one here, stratum granulosum. This layer here will be the stratum corneum. This layer here will be the stratum disjunctum. Name one organ we could find this epithelium. You will say skin. Classify this tissue. Depend in the outermost. This is stratified cuboidal epithelium. Classify this tissue. You will say ciliated pseudo stratified columnar epithelium with goblet 